Hey folks, Marty Griffin here. We are in Butler, up Butler as we say in Pittsburgh. Uh, this is a very special moment, a very special woman. Look at my new best friend, Mary Chitwood. Show us the sign, Patrick. We're at Robin's home. Check this out. Now this is because, this is a very special place for veterans and very special veterans. And without Mary, it doesn't exist. Mary, get him over here near me. Where are you going? <laughs> Tell us about Robin's house. All right, so Robin's house is a transitional housing program for female veterans and their children. Yesterday, we had our zoning board. We had to submit for a special exception hearing because we had some neighbors that raised concerns. And you won. And we won. So who's going to live here? So any female veteran that's in Butler County that needs housing, that's homeless or unstably housed because they're sleeping on somebody else's couch, or any low-income female veteran. You know this area very well. I and I think most people don't even believe that there are homeless female veterans and kids. Are there? Yeah, Catholic Charities provide us data that stated we had 30 female veterans that needed housing assistance in Butler in the last four years. So they're out there? They're out there. And they're going to live here? They're going to live here. Come on, let's take a look. You did this all yourself? Well, I had a lot of help, too. But <laughs> like, still. Yeah, I started the program. And you got free and clear to get it done. I did. When, last night? Yesterday. This yeah. is amazing, Mary. Yeah, it's the first housing program for female veterans in the children of Butler County. So somebody bought this house. Yeah. Dennis and, Baglier, he's and, a local businessman, purchased the house. And we're going to take a look. So come in. Come on in. Welcome to the entryway. And so how much work's been done in here? Okay, so we have put a new kitchen in put two new bathrooms in. We had to repair the plaster walls and do painting. We did a new roof. We did new electric to the house. We replaced 14 windows. And I think Let's take a look. Kind of Let's check out high. the kitchen. So yeah, if you come down through here, here's the kitchen. And it's nice because it's, we just put an island in and the countertop has been donated for the island, so that way there's multiple spaces for females to gather and cook and work, and then a good window seat, you know, so everybody can kind of congregate in here. Why did you do this? Because kitchens always bring people. Why in. did you do this house? Why, why oh, such this, a, house? this oh. so much work for you for so much time, so much effort? I'm an army veteran, so I've always believed in being part of the solution or being part of the problem, and I was very fortunate with the work I've done in the past with homeless homeless veterans and the relationships I've built that has given me the opportunity to do this. You got to feel good about yourself. I do. I this is what we're all about yeah, here. It's sparked. I think it's great that now female veterans have a voice and they're not invisible anymore and it's about changing that stigma because a lot of times you hear a veteran, you think of a male. That's true. I'm the adjutant at my American Legion Post 778, so I'm in charge of all the memberships and we have over 600 members. And when I first joined the Legion, a lot of people thought I was on the auxiliary, that I wasn't a veteran. Oh, mm -hmm. this is a great point that they're actual veterans and they're, they're actually homeless mm -hmm. and they're actually female and actually have kids. Yeah. Most female veterans are caregivers, so you won't find them in shelters or sleeping in the car. They're typically couch surfing with friends or family. So be able to provide that service for them and give them somewhere stable to live while they're getting those wraparound services to reduce those barriers that led to them. The Will they live here for free? Well, if they have income, then they'll be 25% of their income will go to stay in here. Nice. So that will contribute to our operating costs and our utilities. Nice. And then off the kitchen, we have a first floor bath with a pool tub and shower. You can see all the work you've done. It's very exciting. Mm -hmm. That someone like you would be able to make a difference. You must feel uh, very good about what you've done. Do. Rewarded. But I never started out to like, it was never about me. Right. It was just about providing that service for somebody else. So that way, just to kind of help their hard times be yeah. easier to get through. Let's go in here. <coughs> wow, this is so nice. Yep. This the is the dining room. Well, the lady that sold us the house, she donated a lot of antique furniture. And one is this massive table that has leaves. So that will go in here with eight chairs. So There'll be a lot of people in here laughing and telling mm -hmm. stories. And yeah. So let's make sure we give credit where credit's due. So I'm walking through here. It's a little cold in here. It's cold. For y'all at home that can't see it, it is cold in here right now. It's cold. <laughs> so hold on. One of my favorite things that happened in the last week was mm -hmm. my man Bill. 
Yeah. Tell us what happened. So I did the talk show with you and Wendy Bell, and we're talking about there's no heat. Well, we have a furnace, but it's not large enough to heat the home. Right. And the home is three floors, and then we have the basement. So it's four levels in this house. And it's so kind of split, too, somehow, for the heat and air yeah, conditioning. Yeah, yeah. The, the duct work in the basement only runs to the first floor, not to the second or third floor. So Bill Canahan heard the interview that I did with you and Wendy Bell on the radio and reached out to you. And he came in and I met with him and Patrick last week. Yeah. And he's going to donate, the upgrade the furnace, and do the Mitsubishi splits <laughs> on the second floor and third floor. So all together, it's like $30,000. So this heating and air conditioning guy, Bill Canahan, who's been in business 50 years, mm -hmm. he's in the car with his wife. Yeah. They're on the way to the hospital. Mm -hmm. She starts crying hearing this mm -hmm. story. He's going to do all this work. Yeah. It's a good, good life, isn't it? Well, when he told me about all the work, because we've had like 10 people come in and no one would do it. And then some like, oh, you don't need a bigger furnace. I'm like, it's cold. Like, I'm working in here. It's cold. So when he was explaining all the work that went to, I'm like, I understand. Now I understand why people didn't want to step up. And but he is. But he is. So think about it, folks. And this is why I love this story. And this is why Spark is so important. What we're doing is that. So this gentleman who has a, a business here, who can just go about his business and stay mm -hmm. successful, yeah. he's going to put thirty to forty thousand dollars worth of equipment in this house so that you have a good place for your yeah. folks. What kind of person does that? I don't. I don't know. I was shocked. Like I, when he came out, I thought, okay, he's going to tell me what's going to cost. I'm going to have to raise that money and pay him. And when he said, I'm donating it, we're in the basement with Patrick. And that's when I asked if he was huggable, because I never expected that. At you asked him, if you asked him if he was huggable. Yeah. <laughs> I never expected him to donate all of it. I just thought, okay, I got to start raising the money. And when he said, no, I'm donating it. And I'm like, oh my gosh, that's just so amazing. So this guy's going to come in here, this magnificent man. He's going to make this place more of a home because it's going to be warm. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be cool. And, and to, to imagine he's doing it for free to make this magnificent place yeah. livable. So when do you open the doors? When does the first tenant come in here? So we were planning on end of May, beginning of June. So we coming have to up. redo the floors. They're gorgeous hardwood floors. And we got an estimate for $4,000 for the uh -huh. first and second floor. So instead of taking money and spending 4000 myself and other volunteers are going to strip them down and stain them and do all that, but we can't do it, move forward with that until we have heat. So if there's someone out there that wants to do the floors, then yeah, we'd love to hear that. from you. Well, what you're doing here is magnificent. It's everything I love about what we're able to do uh, in life. If we can't make a difference, then yeah. why are we here? Yeah. And you're making a difference. Mm -hmm. It's a pleasure to meet you, and I'm so glad we're doing this. I'm so glad Bill stepped up. Yeah. And we got, there's going to be folks living here. It's going to be a life-changing moment. Yeah. It's really what Mary's about. It's what I'm about. It's what Spark's about. And I can't thank folks enough for their support. Come to the site, spark.com. What kind of difference are you making in your life? Start making that difference. It's never too late. Something as small as shoveling your neighbor's, neighbor's driveway when there's snow or helping them cut the grass in the summer or something as magnificent as putting a $40,000 heating and air conditioning system in a house for strangers. But you know what he told us? You know what made the difference? You. I know, I heard him when he was talking to you. And that's and I, sweet. I got choked up and I got teary eyes. Like, it just means a lot. And it's not just for me, it's just like making a path for female veterans after me, like to have a place to come. And it's really been about community and how people have come together and supported this and their female veterans. And it is right, just you can make a difference just starting your own community. You know, little things like you say, cut the grass, you know, shovel the sidewalk. We've been doing that here. I do that at my own house. <laughs> with my neighbors. She exemplifies greatness and making a difference. That's why we're here. It's why we love it and why we have Sparked. Sparked.com. Check it out, folks. We'll be seeing you soon.